Let me just talk about Brexit for a bit, because I, <laughs> I noticed that a lot of my, uh, my, my friends, mainly from a, a Remain, a London uh, circle, have in their head a mental model. And it, it, it's, it's compelling uh, to them. And it goes like this. Um, Boris lied. Gullible people, by which I mean other people, not my set, Gullible people believe the lies, and gullible people thus voted for Brexit. And it is a very appealing model, uh, but scientists should know that you can't trace causation in that way. And I've spent quite a lot of the last year, and in the book, trying to say, I think in general, the framing of public, public opinion and the views that the public come to are more complicated than that. So rather than jumping to the idea that the public are gullible, or that experts should be trusted and you know, only malicious politicians would suggest uh, you know, that experts shouldn't. You have to ask, why are certain lies more appealing to the public than other lies when a lot of lies are available? And <laughs> that essentially, I think, is where the, the Brexit debate is. And I'm afraid I think it's very, very uh, true of GM. So if you're in the mindset of thinking the public were lied to by the Daily Mail, Silly public believed the lies. Silly public didn't uh, buy GM. I think you, you're forgetting the most important argument here, is why were the public disposed over the years not to be trusting of that technology? Why did they believe the Daily Mail when they uh, appealed to, to fear and Frank, uh, Frankenstein foods? And I, you've heard the argument. There was no discernible benefit to the public. Plenty of other technologies, mobile phones. You remember, you could have had scare stories about mobile phones frying our brains at about the same time in the mid-90s. The public didn't buy those scare stories because they really, really wanted to believe their mobile phone was safe. So one, no discernible benefit. Two, the main advocates of, uh, of GM technology were large American multinational corporations. Do we really think the public was stupid? not to believe what they were told by large American multinationals. Um, and the, the third reason is that this was against a backdrop in Europe, not in the United States, in Europe, of BSE, in which the experts, or what we were thought were experts, mediated through politics, had really tried to be reassuring about some food and then later had to say, actually, it's not... Uh, it, it's worse than we thought. And given those three, I mean, you know, this is just, there's no more to say. Why would the public be trusting uh, in this particular case? Now, what one can do about it, I think, is in your mental model, as a working assumption, assume the public are fairly intelligent. As a working assumption, assume that they will gravitate towards good sense rather than bad sense, towards truth rather than falsehood. Use that as the sort of starting model Try to understand, if you think they're deviating from that, what's going on. And when communicating with the public, rather than treating them as sort of gullible idiots who believe stuff that, you know, the Daily Mail tells them, act as an interpreter of complex data for them. As soon as the public believe they are being sold at by somebody, they discount what that person says, quite reasonably. So as soon as the scientists sounds like they sound like they're selling a technology, the public will say, hmm, it sounds like they're just a little bit too much skin in this game for me to think of them as the person or the group to interpret the facts. So scientists need to be a little more humble about the science and say, this is the risk, this is the disadvantage, and this is the advantage. And that would, I think, help the public come to truth over the years. And economists, and I have an economics background, I think the same is true. What ruined it for economists and their projections in the Brexit referendum was that the economists had got everything wrong 10 years before in the financial crash. And so when economists said, no, really, really trust us on this one, uh, the public were like, yeah, I think we'll make up our own mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.